How to build a raised wildlife pond with a built-in hibernaculum by UK Amphibians and All Things Wildlife. Our garden was full of pebbles. Uh, we've just moved them all to the side and now we're going to start preparing a pond frame. made the main frame of the pond from railway sleepers and we screwed them together. We've screwed everything together on the railway sleepers with base plates. Notice in the pictures. In the pictures it only shows a few base plates but we have added plenty more, even corner brackets too. wall of sandstone around the outer edges and use cement to fix them together. We're using sandstones for the outer edge of the pond in between the railway sleepers and in the centre between both of these we will make the hibernaculum. Using a spirit level on the railway sleepers in the centre of the pond helps us get a nice perfect level square pond. As you can see the wall is slowly coming on with the sandstone. Mentioning earlier we use sand and cement to cement the stones together to make them nice and strong for the outer edge and the gaps in the side of the sandstone are perfect for the amphibians to crawl through and into the hibernaculum. treat the railway sleepers in the centre with uh, fence paint to help look after it for many years once we cover it up with the plastic sheeting for the pond. We now have the outer edges of sandstone at the correct level with the railway sleepers. Also notice the gaps in between the sandstone. This is where it will make space for all the amphibians to crawl in. The gaps in the sandstone are perfect for all the amphibians, insects, animals to climb through the gaps and hibernate there over winter in the hibernaculum. So now we have started to fill the inner areas for where the hibernaculum is going to be with a layer of topsoil, a layer of cardboard, squash cardboard, bits, plenty of old leaves from the garden, a layer of logs and chuck some more topsoil in and then some more cardboard and logs to finish on the top. This will create the perfect habitat for all our amphibians to hibernate in, insects and animals for many more years to come. Here you can 
enjoy some more pictures of us showing the outer area of the hibernaculum. Once the wood is finished on the top, we will put another layer of topsoil and plant it to make the perfect habitat. see the center of the pond area now is pebble free ready to get the pond liner ready to make the pond and also on the outer edges all the logs are filled up to the top to make the perfect hibernaculum area on the outer edges of the pond this will be perfect for the newts, frogs, toads to crawl out of the side of the pond and into the logs. Using plenty of all dust sheets, rags and cloths, we can make a soft area before we apply the pond liner. As you can see, we've applied the pond liner and we're good to go with filling up the water quite soon. Make sure you measure the area of the pond and get extra pond liner so you have plenty to spread about when you fit it in like this. Using the spare sandstone we had left over, we made a wall that actually sits in the pond for all the frogs and newts and all the pond life that can crawl in and hide from predators and also can even hibernate underwater in winter. Time to start filling the pond up with water and planting it with pond plants. Pond plants we've planted the pond with was water forget me not, purple loose strife, quite a few varieties of lilies. Mare's tail, flowering rush, dwarf blue iris, pickerel plant, zebra rush, water mint, 
Marsh Marigold, Dwarf Yellow Iris, One liner overlapping the hibernacular area will be cut back once the pond is full with water. Thanks for watching part one. Make sure you subscribe so you can see the continued build of our amazing pond. Thanks for watching. Once you've subscribed, don't forget to hit the notification button so you can see when part two comes out real soon. Thanks for watching.